All right, Shalom. First off, we're going to start off with saying all praises, honor, and glory is due to you. Howl by Shimon Shai, by Shimon Karkadash. All praises to the world calls God, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, by Shimon in the name of Yahweh Shai, be the name of the only begotten Son. Also, want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the whole for like preaching, swear in truth and sincerity. On the brother Taz Abad and Great Millstone, Arizona Camp Lowell, with another video to edify. And, uh, I wanted to go into some of these, uh, this bank collapse in Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, it's cold, man, because the information I learned was from the other Ricard Kwaman, um, elder brother in, uh, Dallas, uh, Ariella, and he went into how, um, <laughs> the FDIC was over leveraged right it was over leveraged so a lot of these bank collapses are just going to come in from insurance claims when people start trying to just take their money out now peep this video I'm going to get some information out of it and get some precepts and get into some articles and Lord willing it's edifying changed when in reality everything had changed the other thing that they did was install the Glass-Steagall Act, which separated deposit-taking banks from investment risk-taking banks. So they wanted everybody to feel confident because, after all, what created the crash in 29 was a lot of risk-taking. There's more to it, but that's for another day. And they guaranteed deposits. That you see? So that Glass-Steagall Act, when you look it up, Basically, what she's saying is, before investment investment banks and private de banks where people deposit their paychecks were counted all in the same. So that same bank that was sitting there gambling money was able to gamble people's deposits and people lost stuff. All right. So the Glass Steagall Act basically separated those banks, and, and up until 1999, right, the act stayed in place. After 1999, that changed. They basically removed that that uh that act. So now banks were, were able to make different little laws with, with the federal government to now uh, be able to do what they're doing with people's deposits right now. Now peep this, man. Keep keep listening. That's when the FDIC was born, so that people would. They put their deposit in the bank, trusting that they would be able to get it back out again. We're going to talk more about that in a while. But I think it's really interesting that openly he was talking about the revaluation of gold to dollars, which enabled them to print so many more. Because after all, they're backed by good assets. Guess what, guys? These are still good assets. But, you know, this evolution, they can't do things overnight because then you notice things and you make different choices. And I've talked about this many times. In 95, they, they legalized Reg D, and that actually was about uh, the banks having more money to work with in their speculations because when you make a deposit in a bank, it is swept into a sub-account that is in the bank's name. Mm. Not you see that? Right. When you make a deposit to the bank, it's swept into an account that's under the bank's name. So legally, it's their money. All right. So this is what they do. So what happened was with this uh, with this Silicon Valley bank was that when it collapsed, right? Basically, there were an amount of people that were pulling out large sums of money, and they had to liquidate some of their assets. In order to cover those deposits and people caught on to it and a bunch of people started trying to pull that money when 97 percent of the people that banked with that particular bank were millionaires right so they were pulling out large sums to the point where the bank didn't have the money or the capital because what they were basically uh gambling right and investing with the deposits from all these peoples so the FDIC didn't even have enough money to really cushion that blow. And now here it is. All right, the brother put this in the chat. Look at that. 
It says upward news. This is from Twitter. I don't have it, so I can't get to it. But it says breaking breaking lines have have allegedly formed outside of the first public first republic uh, bank branch in Los Angeles, California. I've never seen a bank run in Brentwood, Los Angeles, in over 40 years. People are are standing in the rain, right? Because these people put their hope in the world. Right? It says the F now this article from uh, Zero Hedge says game over FDIC shutters Silicon Valley Bank appoints receivers. It says uh, as we noted before, while the FDIC, which is the FDIC, is who insures insures everybody's money in the bank by federal law to cover them up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But if you got these people that are making three three hundred million, right, and all that money's in there. And the money that they would use for payroll is in there. They ain't got no fucking hope. So as, as we noted, while while the FDIC noted that the um, that the um, Silicon Valley uh, bank had 175 billion in deposits as of December 31st, note that some some 151.5 billion of these are uninsured. Right, so they only assured up to twenty million dollars, but they had one hundred fifty-one that didn't get any coverage. That kills people, man. It says, which means they are, ex which means they are getting hey, which means they are getting zero. Ripples, get over here. Right, so they only insured twenty-four. They only had enough to cover twenty-four thousand, uh, twenty-four billion. And insurance claims, but then they they had 151 that they should have. Uh, they had 175 they should have covered. That's like 97 percent, right? 97 percent is what they needed to cover, and they didn't. They couldn't do it. It says which means they get exactly zero, although a sizable number of them likely pulled their deposits in the past few days. God damn, bro. Right. It says, and just like the uh, Silicon Valley Bank is no more a historical, a historic collapse, which many ways was faster than Lehman, right? Going into Lehman Marcus, and and uh, in which has been, and it's a slack, and it says in which has seen SIVB stock plunge. Uh, from seven hundred and sixty-three dollars to zero dollars in sixteen months. Like God damn, it's a lot of that's a lot of wealth lost, right? So a lot of those people aren't gonna get their money. A lot of those employers that had millions of dollars to be able to pay the payrolls are not gonna have that money. They're gonna have two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and them niggas are sitting there hiding in in, in their grandparents' houses right now. Cause you can look up somebody's house just by their name, right in that city. So they they on the run. Cause I'm saying people that ain't gonna get their checks come come Mondays and Fridays. They 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 gonna be irate, right? Let's get some precept. This is a Zephaniah one. And eleven, you know I'm a gratis in the the blue letter. To get some history off this. Zephaniah 1 and 11. It says, How ye, ye inhabitants of Mektesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all that bear silver are cut off, right? And when you go into Mektesh, Right, this the spiritual representation for Mactash today is America, right? Because Mactash, right, was a a city that was known for a merchandise. Right, I think it goes a little more into it says Mactash, a hollow or valley, evidently in the Greater Jerusalem area. I'm gonna go down on this. It says, where is it at? I'll get it in.
and you got to get it in the commentaries. One second. What's that commentary? Translation, cross reference. Text commentaries. See what David Guzik got to say. Where is it at? Can't remember if you get it off of this or not. But Matt Tash was known for trade, having big money, just like America. So when it says, how are you inhabitants of Matt Tash, right? The howling is because what? Pain came. Hey, it says all the merchant people are cut off. This is a merchant place. Everybody comes to the America to sell. All that bare silver are cut off. Basically going in all that all that wealth that was built up and people only care about wealth. You you go on social media, they're all talking about the bag. You go into some of these um red pill podcasts and everything, they'll bring women on there and say what's the most important thing that a man can offer, and they'll say money. Well, when there ain't no money flowing, them them women are gonna be stuck out there, right? So, the money's drying up, man. The money's drying up, and that's prophecy, right? These devils have done terrible practices to the point where now they're legally able to just rob the people, right? You get this. This is um, Jeremiah 22 and 13. It says, Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service out without wages and giveth him not of his work for his work. Right? So the fact that you can sit here and have an entire bank establishment open, deny people for loans, only to find out you don't even have that real income in the bank in the first place. Yo, that's, that's a wicked-ass practice. That's a wicked practice, man. And the Lord said you're not supposed to use your neighbor's services without wages. How is it that, that these banks will sit here and loan you money for a house at hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they don't even have that money in there, but if you don't have the money to pay them, right, going on a couple of months or, or one or two months, they can come and repossess the house and kick you out. How the hell did that work? Right? The Lord said, whoa, meaning destruction to to a place like that. And this is that banking system is set up. This is Genesis 47. Genesis 47 and uh, 15. It says, and when the money fell in the land of Egypt, right? In America, that's that new Egypt, man. When you go to the book of Revelation, it tells you there's going to be a place... It's going to be called spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt. When you look at America as a whole, this this is spiritually Sodom, man. I, this is where everywhere it, it was pushed out that it was okay to be a mo. Y'all just supposed to communicate, not sit on your Right? So, this place, America, represents Sodom and Egypt. So, in Genesis 47 again, it says, 15th verse, when the money fell in the land of Egypt and in, in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money fell it. Right? And that's what's going to happen. Right? The money's going to fail. People are going to be put in death's two positions. And you know, all the hard choices are going to start being made. Right? This is, um... This is um, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It says, The thing that had been is that which shall be, 
and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun so the thing that was happened before was money fell in Egypt bro and every one of these kingdoms the money fell right you have the Frank the Frank fell the British dollar collapsed at one point right all these currencies all these currencies fell well now America's at the point now where they're getting ready to fail too because they over leveraged and over borrowed right it's a natural course and they laid themselves right with thick clay we're gonna get that precept right they laid in themselves I'll just get it now Two, two and six it says shall not all these take a preparable against them and a taunting proverb against them and say woe to him that increaseth that which is not his how long and to him and to him that increases that which is not his how long and to him that laid in himself with thick clay that word thick clay literally means debt and in hebrew means ibadia which means debt So this is what it is. These devils have popped themselves up with debt so much to where <laughs> to where they only had what four billion dollars of uh, insurance on, on the money that they're supposed to have, and they're <laughs> they got a negative insurance balance of one hundred and fifty-one thousand. Right, this is how these devils roll, or it's twenty-four. Right. 24, 24 billion is what they had, and they had, there's still an outstanding of 151 billion that was supposed to be done, to be insured, right? And now that those bank, those bank runs are running up more, right? That you even had some worries about, uh, what is it, Wells Fargo today, having to put out a statement saying that um, that the current issue with people's bank accounts showing up with zero with zeros is due to a, a glitch well, I mean well they could have put that glitch in while they were selling stuff to avoid people being able to do a bank run you never know exactly how, how deep the rabbit hole goes until it's revealed right this is um Matthew 6 I mean the purpose of it is right, bringing in these things is because you got to be real careful about where you put your mindset and your allegiance to. A lot of people in this world, they only put it on the bag. The bag, the bag, the bag. It was all about getting money, right? They put it in the songs. If you ain't talking about money, you can't tell me nothing. And now what? Now they're in a, in a terrible spot. This is Matthew 6 and 19. It says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, right? Where moth and rust dust corrupt, doth corrupt where these break through and still so you weren't supposed to put in all your all your mindset to the treasures in the world you're supposed to put your mindset to the treasures with the lord so the people that only had the treasures in the world and had no treasures laid up with the lord you're in a bad position it says but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor uh, doth corrupt where these do not break it through nor still and where your treasure is there will your heart be also for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, right? So now they took away a lot of people's heart because they only cared about money, right? Now you got a bunch of jigs going on TikTok showing you how to make money in this world. Oh, it's stupid for you to do this. This is what you should be doing with your money. How many of them are really sitting there saying, get back to the Lord, right? Repent, come to the Lord, do what the Lord said. Right, but we're going to be all right because the Lord said he's going to sustain us, man. The Lord promised that he would sustain us. This is Luke uh, 12. In 21, let's start up. It says, um, verse 16, it says, and he, spake a, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a rich man brought forth plentiful. Right? These rich niggas brought it forth plentiful. They had $300,000. They were sitting there planning all these trips they thought they were good 300 million dollars they have fortune 500 companies right what a bank collapsed and now they lost every fucking thing right getting ready to sit here and hang from the ceiling fan with it on 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. All my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat and drink, and be merry. And this is what people's mindset was. Save up as much money for retirement. Save up as much money for retirement. So you can live a good old age. And you can, you can just party and bullshit for the rest of your life. It says, but the most I said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required thee. This night thy soul shall be required thee. Uh, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Um, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards the most high. So this is the same lot that these people are in. Right? Now the Lord is going to start requiring people's souls. You don't think these niggas that worked all them hours at a job they didn't like, and then payday come around, and you tell them they ain't got no money, you ain't got no money to pay them, and they gonna go home silently and be okay. Nah, they gonna be they gonna be they gonna be putting hands on people. They gonna empty that fucking building out, man. All right, Jake gonna air that shit out, man. Second Ezra fifteen. And 16, it says, For there should be sedition among men. Right? What is sedition? A violent uprising. And invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions to stand in their power. Right? And what do you think is going to cause people to go into a state where they don't give a fuck what the government says? They don't care what their manager says? They're, they're not even worried about going to work tomorrow. I mean, having a bank collapse and their money no longer being available. To the point where they don't know what the hell to do. And all they were ever told their whole life is to work to sit here and have money. That that seems like a perfectly reasonable response. Right? You know what? I'm going to end it right there. So Lord willing, this is Ed Farmer. Say call Lord. Yabba Shemir. Shabba Shemir. Kaka. Shalom.